Um, morning. Morning. Jim says I'm technical director. I'm, a, I'm an engineer by trade. Um, I've been here now for about 24 and a half years. Um, so just a little bit about the, the engineering department. We're a team of about 75 or so, uh, including apprentices. And we're responsible for pretty much all the services coming into the park, all the unpleasant waste leaving the park, and everything in between. Um, we also um, represent the project team, um, but we then also the guys who are responsible for inspection and maintenance of all of the rights of the park. So, um, at the end of a project such as ICON, um, we kind of get to the end of three, three and a half years of hard graft and go, done, we're finished. <laughs> and we hand it over to ourselves to then look after it, inspect it, maintain it, fix it, understand it, etc., etc. So, um, we never really get any time away from the project, uh, unlike a lot of places like um, we were over at uh, Leesburg earlier this week talking to those guys about Helix, which I'm sure a lot of you will know about. So they had sort of four or five years experience of living with that ride, and we went over to kind of pick their brains and, and swap stories and swap issues and problems and solutions and things like that. Um, so they have a completely separate projects department. So the projects team do their projects and hand it over to the maintenance team to look after. Um, that sounds like quite a nice way of doing it if you're in the projects team, but um, it doesn't quite work like that here. Um, so just a brief bit about ICOM, um, as it's, it's significant that it's, it's opened this year. Um, we've been working on this in earnest since the very early part of 2015, when myself and a colleague went on a European tour of manufacturers and their subcontracts facilities. Um, can you hear me at the back all right, by the way? Yeah. yeah. Um, because uh, we wanted to, I'll come the middle, we wanted to um, go around and assess the different capabilities of the different manufacturers uh, and their subcontractors, because that's equally as important to us. Um, so we went to Intamin, Vacoma and Mac, and there was only really a fag paper between all of them. Um, if I'm, I'm not going to say what the different preferences were for e each different element, because um, I'm being filmed, so I'm not going to say that. Um, <laughs> but there was, there, was, there was very little in it. Um, but we, we, we plumped for Mac, uh, and at that point we started in earnest with the, the revisions to the track geometry and track layout. The proposal that they'd given us initially wasn't that exciting compared with some of the others, but we had a lot of faith in those guys as, as designers, manufacturers, and, and in their, their equipment. Uh, we felt they could give us a good product. So um, over a period of a few months we then specified more and more about what we wanted the, the, the right to be. Uh, we then iterated the, the, the track geometry. Then you start to, to design column positions. We then got a surveyor in and we mapped out and pegged in the ground, as I'm sure a lot of you saw, because it was all over the internet, um, the, 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 the blue markers in the ground. Which one of you was it? Um, uh, and that no was sort of, we, could, we could physically look and say, right, can we actually construct a foundation in this position? So then the column iteration started. Um, further alterations because we found that, or Mac uh, identified an issue with the, the track geometry, which was um, in a couple of places exceeding what the train was capable of doing. That's how tight everything was. So a few more tweaks of that and columns and everything else, and then we have to figure out how to build the damn thing. Um, those of you who, well, I'm sure you're all very familiar with the site and the topography of the site, it was very, very tricky to, to figure out how we could actually construct this thing. We're built basically on a mixture of sand and peat, so it's pretty poor for foundations, so everything has to be piled here. Um, but very difficult to get the big piling rigs, which are very efficient, into a lot of the smaller areas and the tighter areas. So uh, a lot of conversation with um, a local piling contractor about how do we do this, how do we get there, how can we do the whole job. Um, figured all that out, pressed the go button with Mac, and the rest is history. So. Um, Best part of a year on the ground works. It should have been about five months, um, but there were various problems um, associated with that, which I'm not going to go into because we haven't settled anything yet. Um, and then, but that did then push us right to the very limit because we couldn't get on site to build the station. We were struggling to get some of the services in place because the ground works were going on. Um, and then a little over a year ago, you'll have seen the track and the columns start arriving in the car park. Um, uh, then, Tomorrow, last year, uh, first day of winter was when it all began in earnest on site. And uh, that was all a bit crazy and a bit worrying at times. Um, a lot of issues to, to deal with, but that's, that's what engineers do. You know, our, our day job is to solve problems, so that's what we do. Um, and before we knew it, we were commissioning. 
um, tweaking the whole thing to go just as, as, as was necessary. And then suddenly it was 25th of May and people were riding it. And the feedback was, was really good, really encouraging. Uh, made all that, that work seem worthwhile. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Um, we think it's um, something like a bit of a masterpiece. Um, and a hell of a job to actually get it designed and installed uh, without hitting anything. Which wasn't luck, by the way. That was um, very detailed. <laughs> um, although we do like to tell people it's a bit of luck, just for a bit of a laugh. Um, and there we go. So suddenly here we are, last day of the season. Um, long day yesterday, late night last night. I'm a bit weary, so um, at that point I'll hand it over to any questions, but please be gentle with me. <laughs> <laughs> I've only had one coffee so far today. I'll go first then. Yeah. So, um, which part of it all was most exciting for you? Was it when the track arrived or when it was finished? Was it a particular point that was most exciting for you, would you say? Um, I think the, the best bit, I don't know if it was the most exciting, but uh, the best bit was when we put the staff on. Yeah. Um, I, I, had, I don't ride rides, as, as some of you may or may not know. Um, I rode this one with, with Steve, my colleague, on the, the first ride. Because um, we, we, we sat on one of our flights um, coming back from, uh, from Mac one day, a couple of years ago, that say, uh, yeah, we had to do this, I'd have to ride this ride. Um, so that was exciting, but the best bit was seeing the reaction of the staff. Yeah. Um, they absolutely loved it. And, and um, just to, to sort of stand by the final break on Coaster's balcony, and just watch people's faces, hear the, hear the last when they, when they came back. Um, and everyone was so impressed, and that, that, was, that was the most satisfying thing. Great stuff. What do you actually start from when you want to put a new ride in? Is it how much space have we got or how through in the ride? It's, it's really what, what do we want the ride to do? Um, what sort of experience are we looking to, to, to sell? Um, where can we put it? Um, how can we get it there? How can we build it? Um, I mean, we're quite restricted on plan space, but of course we, we work in three dimensions, so we've got plenty of sky above us. Um, so there's always options there. But it's really, it, it starts, um, in the case of Icon, it started with, with Nick Thompson had some ideas of what he wanted a coaster to be like, based on uh, things like Cheetah Hunt, that sort of thing. Um, and then it was a case of, if we want to do something like that, where can it go? Uh, and that then leads to other things as well. If it needs to go around, around the go-kart track area, um, there's not enough room there for a ride, where else can it go? We've got the old Tom Sawyer Lake. Um, then there's the gap in the, in the big long lift. Wouldn't it be fun to go through there? And it just it kind of evolves like that. So it, it starts with a concept of, of what experience do we want? Um, you know, do you want something that's going to be big and high and going over everything like the big one? Or do you want something a bit different? Uh, in this case of, we want something a bit different um, where you're close by things, close to the ground, close to other structures. That enhances the sense of speed. Um, and after a period of time, it evolves into, into something like Icon. But it's a long, long process. Since um, the ride's been running since May, it's been your biggest engineering challenge. So, what, been, what was the first bit, sorry? Since the ride's been running since May, yeah. what's been your biggest engineering challenge? Um, understanding what makes it tick and understanding how and why it goes wrong. Um, it's a massively complex thing. It's, it's technology that we've never seen before. Um, uh, there's masses of diagnostics on there. But it's not always very helpful. Has there been a scenario there where you think, oh, what do we do here? Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, thankfully not on my weekend, it was, it was my, my colleague's weekend when the train didn't come back. Ah. Uh. I don't know if anyone's aware of that. Yeah. 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 Um, and um, we're not entirely certain why. We think it was um, a gust of wind amongst other things that, um, that stopped it. Um, and it made it into the roll and stopped and then decided which way to go, and it chose backwards. The, the, the guys all stayed on until about two o'clock in the morning to, to re recover it as far as launch two, and then we picked it up in the morning and, and brought it back from there. Um, so that was a challenge. Uh, in terms of things going strange, um, there's been quite a lot of minor niggly stuff, a lot of repetitive stuff. Um, so it's just, it's more, um, very minor error messages, which just, it takes us 10 or 15 minutes to get down there, um, see if it's anything of any significance and reset the ride. I suppose each time you learn from the one before. Never stop learning. Yeah. You know, every ride surprises me from time to time. Um, this one, um, 
because it's so complex, it just, it's going to take a lot of time. Yeah, yeah. The, the biggest problem you faced actually building the coaster? Um, the topography of the site um, and the fact that we, we were kind of almost building ourselves into a corner. And, and that's the bit we had to figure out very early on before we actually sort of committed to, to building the ride. How the hell are we, can we actually build this? Knowing where things had to go, how can we get machinery in there? How are we going to get out? Um, where can we site cranes and everything else? Um, how do we get the stuff from here to where it needs to be? Um, and it was the fact that we had to do all the works in the old late bed and kind of work our way out. And we had a, a ramp going in. Um, we couldn't install the end of launch, or the, the final piece of launch one, because the ramp was in the way, because it had to be so you could actually get the gradient down there. Um, so you had to kind of dig a little bit of it away, level it off, um, finish off launch one, and then dig, dig more foundations out that you'd buried so you could get back in there. It was just um, almost silly, really. It was, it was kind of, um, yeah, all, all a little bit ludicrous, but that's just the way of things. And, you know, it, it's, it's a problem. We just have to find a way of solving it. If you could do it again, would you do it differently, though? No. No. No, I wouldn't do anything differently. I think we got it um, pretty much spot on. I think. We got a great coaster out of it, there's no doubt about yeah, that. Yeah. 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 Glad you like it. Any more questions? With Icon's height, was it designed to be its height? So, with the windy weather, we get in Blackpool, so it doesn't get as much disruption by the wind as, say, like the big one. Was no, it? no, the wind wasn't really a consideration. Um, the big one's an unusual case, really. That there's, there's only really the big one of the flying machines that, that, that are affected by wind here. Um, I mean, the, the thing with Icon, if it doesn't make it over, say, um, the England after launch two, it rolls back, it stops, we bring the train back and we launch it again. So there's not really an issue. Um, the, the only place where we're a bit concerned now as the wind is um, if it's a bit of a slow day, if it's a cold day, and we haven't worn the train up all that much, um, coming back through the roll. Um, and when it's, when it was stopped, it launched two for two, two and a half hours either Friday with the, the block problem we had. It was, uh, it almost stopped on a high five. So those were kind of moments. Um, but no, the, the, the wind was never a design consideration. Oh. What's the strangest thing you've been called on the radio? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've never been called. <laughs> We call far stranger things not on radio. <laughs> it's a pretty ruthless department that we work in. Um, how do you mean what's the strangest thing? So like with a ride, if it's had an issue, what's the most so if you're going about your engineering business and your radio comes out, what's the strangest ride issue you have to deal with? Um one of the amusing ones that we, that we get is on the steeplechase. Um, you, you might notice um, some yellow pieces of metal hanging down from the bottom of the, the chassis, um, which the chain dogs, we call them, is what engages them in the, in, in the chain and takes you up. Um, and the reason that they're painted yellow is so that you, they can easily be seen from the operator's box. There's one on each side of the horse, one for each chain. And occasionally you get one of them stick. Now, if it's the one on the left-hand side, the operator's going to struggle to see that on the left. He can see it if it's sharp eyes as it is going around certain parts of the track. Obviously, the one on the right is quite easy to see. So what we often hear is, is um, uh, a call for the steeplechase, problem with a dog and a horse. <laughs> <laughs> I have heard it said, uh, I'm not sure if you want a fitter or a vet. <laughs> um, so Are you planning on making to any of the coasters over the summer in terms of like painting or anything like that? Um, <clears throat> we've, we've got some thoughts about um, painting because... Um, the, the trouble is, it's very expensive to, to maintain these things. Um, and painting is one of the things that tends to suffer. Um, because when you um, sort of stick into budgets, it's, it's an easy one to, to let go and, and we'll pick it up next year and next year and next year and next year. Um, because what we, what we can't afford to do is try and save on any of the mechanical stuff or electrical stuff. Um, and all that stuff goes up in cost every year. Um, as, as all metallic things tend to do. Um, so if we're trying to balance books, then, then painting is one of the things that tends to suffer, but we have got um, a plan in place for um, doing things differently. But uh, yeah, we do want to try and get on top of it because 
um, particularly the big one. It, it's, it's right in the blast zone. Yeah. Um, and it's not looking very pretty. So it's very two tone or down towards. Yeah, and you light up at nine, you go. Oh. <laughs> 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 it should look better. It really should. Have you stopped painting the woodies? Have we what, sorry? Have you stopped painting the wooden roll? Um, yes. That's, the, that's been a deliberate decision. That was just for the, the easier to maintain you don't paint? Um, the, it's better for the, for the wood. Um, if, you, if you paint it, paint eventually cracks, um, yeah. particularly where, where it gets it's subject to full sun. Um, moisture gets in, it gets trapped, and it can't get out, and it starts to rot the wood. Um, and to be honest with you, uh, I don't think white painted coasters look particularly nice <laughs> because fasteners start to corrode and then they start to, to, to weep sort of rusty lines everywhere. Um, white's the worst colour in the world for showing up anything. Only a little bit of dust and dirt and grime. It's everywhere. Um, I think a, a natural timber coaster looks nice. <laughs> <coughs> it's like 30 years time to go through the replacements actually or go from white to all the Yeah, things. ultimately. Um, whether we'll ever entirely change, I'm sure one day it will, but that might be 100 years from now. Yeah. Uh.